Good morning and welcome everyone to the Following the Way of the Cross broadcast. I am Pastor Byram and we thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday morning. We're coming at you live and uh, we're beginning a new study today. Praise the Lord. Uh, but before we get into all that, I do want to introduce my special guest. I've got the whole family here with me this morning. I've got my wife, Heather. Good morning, everybody. And my son, Nathan, is with us this morning. Hi. Praise the Lord. And we're uh, going to get ready to uh, dig into the word of the life. And uh, before we do that, just wanted to remind everyone of the upcoming camp meeting that's coming up March 13th through the 15th. Uh, that is going to be a great time in the Lord. So if you can be here during that time, we encourage you to. Once again, that's March 13th through the 15th. We're going to have all the ministers. As you know, we've been announcing this. Uh, from Crossline Radio, Crossline TV, or be with us. Uh, and uh, we're going to have several services that weekend. And, um, you know, we're looking forward with great expectations of a great move of God. And um, so that's, once again, March the 13th through the 15th. There'll be a Friday night services. There'll be uh, three services on Saturday, and I believe two services on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Uh, so just looking forward to that. We've got people coming from all over the United States, and it's just going to be a great gathering of God's people. And, you know, we've been announcing it for some time now. Um, but um, also as well, we have uh, the, the, I guess you would say the fall camp meeting um, is going to be held uh, at Crossway Ministries in Greenwood, Mississippi. And I believe the dates for that is going to be August the 7th through the 9th. So the, the, uh, <clears throat> the Determined Conference is going to be uh, this fall as well. We do two a year, and um, at least that's what we plan on doing at the moment. We're going to be doing two conferences a year. And, um, you know, we entitled this conference Determined Camp Meeting because, uh, number one, Paul said, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And understand that we're going to stay determined Amen. as believers to finish this race. And I believe that is kind of the, the idea behind the word Determined Camp Meeting because we are determined. Uh, we're determined to stay determined uh, so you know what I'm saying that we're going to be contenders for this faith praise the Lord but um, today we're going to be beginning a new study on the on the book of Ephesians and we've entitled this study ladies and gentlemen our position in Christ because really when we go through the book of Ephesians uh, ladies and gentlemen that is really the theme of the book of Ephesians, if you will, our position in Christ. Paul comes right out uh, in the opening uh, few verses of the great epistle of the Ephesians, and he talks about our position in Christ. And oh, what a grand position it is Amen. to be found in him. And um, as you know, we had been going through the doctrine of total depravity. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I feel like we've spent enough time on it. It's something uh, that doesn't need to be beaten down. But, um, you know, Heather, I'm thinking about maybe putting the, the series together for the people. If you may have missed this study on the doctrine of total depravity, uh, we're going to try to put that together in a series for you. Maybe you a, a DVD Maybe series. a DVD series. I think there was four or five episodes of it. I'm not really uh, for okay. sure about that, but I thought they really turned out great. So it's going to be a uh, a blessing for people that want to go back and watch if they can. So, uh, Heather, I'm going to ask you pray and open us up in prayer this morning, if you would. Heavenly Father, thank we you, just Jesus. So lift we you up as you always, Lord, morning. and Lord, help us, God. Yielding these vessels to you and. Us, thankful Jesus. for everything that you bless us with daily, Lord God, because of what you've done Help at the us, cross Lord, and because of your blood, Lord God. We, we, we have every you, spiritual blessing, every physical blessing, Lord you, God. Jesus. We pray that you'll continue to reveal that to us in our hearts, that it would become this finished work that you have well, done, that it would you, become Lord. a reality to us, Lord. Mm, we praise you and thank you, Lord. And we just ask that you would minister today, that it would be your spirit that would speak thank to your church. You, Lord, we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' amen name, amen. amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. 
Well, Heather, um, if you will, let's let's go ahead and, and, and let's look into the book of Ephesians this morning. And I hope everybody's got their coffee with them this morning. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to begin in chapter 1. And uh, let me read it here. It says, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Now, did you notice the calling of God was his will? Praise the Lord. God's will. To the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now let's stop right there because Paul opens up the very first verse of the book of Ephesians by pointing to the believer's faithful position. Understand, faithful in Christ Jesus. So I want to make note of this, Heather, right here. The believer's place in the body of Christ is the position that has been given to us. Position, uh, to me, Heather, when we talk about our in Christ position, there could be um, no more important doctrine out there. Our identification with Christ. We, we stressed the importance last week of our position um, as we were even studying the doctrine of total depravity. Uh, you know, as a great as a doctrine as the doctrine of total depravity is, I made mention that the doctrine of identification with Christ was just as important with that uh, as is. So our position in Christ, when we talk about our position, Heather, and let's explain to the people what that means. Um, there may be new listeners out there that haven't followed this broadcast in a while. And when we talk about our position, that is what happened at the salvation experience, ladies and gentlemen. This is the best way I know how to explain that. At the salvation experience, when you first became a believer in Christ, when you were saved, when you were regenerated, when you were born again, all those terms can be used there. Um, what happened was, in the mind of God, Heather, God took us out of the old body of Adam, he crucified the old body of Adam, and he placed us down into the literal body of Christ. Understand, that is how God sees us, Heather, in Christ Jesus. So now, uh, because of that position today of in Christ Jesus, we are now free from condemnation we are now found blameless in Christ we now have all of these benefits that flow from Calvary's cross in our new position so that is my idea of position uh, in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. and go ahead and, and talk to the people a minute about it I know you got some things on your heart there well you know Paul spoke vehemently about this subject and we've you know we've covered this this isn't the first time we've talked about identification with Christ when we covered Romans 6, um, you know, when we've covered Galatians, Paul makes reference to, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. In Romans 6, Paul talked again a whole lot about um, knowing this. Uh, what is it we need to know? We need to know that we are crucified with Christ, that we were buried with him in baptism. Many people, especially around this time of year when Easter comes up, the subject of resurrection becomes people's focus. And I see, you know, these crosses in people's yards and it says he is risen. And I'm not negating the resurrection by any means, so please don't, don't misunderstand me. But, um, you know, the way that we got, got our union with Christ was in his death and our simple faith in the fact that he died on the cross for us in our stead. Then we were joined to him. And so the, the, the biggest, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the biggest part of identification with Christ is understanding our union with him. Mm -hmm. Without being um, married to you, I inherited all of, if say, say you were a millionaire and I married you, what was yours, your millions would be my millions. Right. Um, 
And, and so with being in Christ, we are joined to him. That's why when Paul made, and we'll get to it further on in Ephesians, well, he would make those you know, references uh, to marriage. Whenever we talk about the benefits of the cross, and let's try it like this. Um, the benefits of the cross, our justification, our sanctification, our regeneration, all the things that took place when we were first saved. Listen, today, and I've mentioned this several times, but you cannot get no more sanctified in the eyes of God than the moment you believed. You are 120% sanctified at that very moment. So sanctification, we have to understand, is positional. Right. Justification, ladies and gentlemen, is positional. The born-again experience is a positional transition from the body of Adam to the new body of Christ. So when we talk about our union with Christ, what we are talking about is something so wonderful, something so great that, that we, we now as believers uh, have the title deed to. We really are in Christ, and, and He is in us, and we are in Him, and, and that's the way you need to see yourself. Listen, sanctification, the only way it could possibly take place, legally take place, is by the atonement. The atonement paid for all sin. Not some sin, ladies and gentlemen. It paid for all sin and our placement into Christ Jesus. That was a positional sanctification that took place. So we got to understand everything that flows from Calvary's cross is positional. When we talk about being in Christ, we're free from guilt, we're free from fear, we're free from condemnation of the devil, we're free, we're free, we're free because of that place. Now Paul, ladies and gentlemen, he would talk in several places uh, through the scriptures about how we are blameless. Now, he's going to mention this actually in verse 4, and I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but I'm going to come back to this verse later. He says, according as he have chosen us, where? In, in him. In him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. So the word blame there, we are holy and without blame before them before him, excuse me, by our faith in the sacrifice. That's the only uh, means by which God can justify us, sanctify us, and move us to that new position. It only comes through faith in the cross of Calvary. Now, we're going to talk about this uh, positional process in great depth, so I encourage you to stay tuned uh, to these broadcasts as we go deeper into it. But uh, anytime, Heather, you see those phrases in your Bible of in Christ, by Christ, through Christ, or you see the phrase in him, by him, through him, those phrases always point you directly to the cross of Calvary and what happened 2,000 years ago that day. So uh, really when we talk about being found blameless, the only way we can be found blameless is to be found in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. So God forbid that I should glory in anything. I am made whole. I am made sanctified by what he did completely on the cross of Calvary. I want to include Nathan in this conversation. Um, and, you know, there's simplicity in Christ. He's uh, grown up with us, the majority of what he remembers, I guess, you know, cognitively. Um, we've been knowing this message during that time. Uh, Nathan, let me just ask you a, a, a question. How is, it that we, um, how is it that we are in Christ? How are we born again? When we Talk place, to the mic. When we place our faith in Christ Jesus. When you place your faith. So water baptism is not what placed you into Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Right? So it was just by believing what Jesus did? Mm-hmm. That's right. right. Amen. So God made it so simple <clears throat> that even a child could understand it. Um, you know, he knows that it's not water baptism that saved him. And if, if it was, my husband and I were discussing this this morning is... Um, you know, if it was water baptism that saved us, 
then what you've if you believe that you're saved because you were water baptized and we're not against water baptism it's an ordinance of the church we should do it it's an outward thing just like a, it's an outward symbol just like this wedding ring is for my marriage but it's not my marriage the wedding ring is not my marriage the water baptism is not your relationship with Christ and it's not what saved you anybody can get wet um, so then it would just be simple faith in what he has done yeah. like you said earlier I mean that takes all the glory from man we can't glory in that um, because it's not like you could say our tendency would be to uh, say, well, I had such great faith to believe this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's our tendency, and that's, you know, uh, where depravity would come in. But, um, you know, I thank God that he made it so simple. That's right. You know, our, our position can be, you know, sometimes uh, scholars will use the word our standing. Uh, sometimes they will use the word in Christ. Um, you, you, you know, there's different little phrases, and don't get confused um today with the terminology that we're using here it's it's you know literally and i've used this analogy before but when when we uh first believed when we first put our faith in the sacrifice for the remission of our sin um that is when the born again experience happens and there's a lot of things that that take place at that very moment our justification, our sanctification, and our regeneration take place simultaneously. Instantly, we are born again. And we are transferred, and I've used this analogy, we are transferred from the old body of Adam. I use the address uh, analogy. Our own body, uh, the, the Adam body, the broken body, the fallen body. We, ch we changed addresses from old Adam Street to literally New Christ Street. Um, really, you know, God is, is not trying to rehabilitate the old man. Uh, what he is doing is he's recreating a new man in his son. The Bible teaches us that um, if any man be in Christ, that all old things are passed away, meaning the old Adam man was crucified. It was passed away, and behold, all things become new. So he made us new. He restored what was fallen and lost at the cross of Calvary. So really, you know, this is one of the main central doctrines, Heather, that really, really set me free as it regarded uh, my walk with the Lord as it regards an understanding that he's made me perfect. He's made me blameless. He's made me without guilt. He's made me uh, to walk without fear. I have everything. You know, Paul talked about the armor of God and Heather, what he was talking about was our position. All those things that he spoke about, and we're going to get to that later on in this in this epistle of Ephesians where he talked about that. But when we talk about the armor of God, we're talking about our placement into Christ. Christ is the armor. He is literal armor for us. We are in him, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to start seeing yourself in the perfect finished work of Calvary because that's where you are, glory to God. You know, um, again, Nathan, when, when you got saved, do you know what happened? What happened when you get when you gave when you you put your faith in Christ and what He did? I I got it took out of old Adam and then and I got put in in Jesus. That's, That's right. right. So when God looks at you, does He see Nathan? No, He see He's Jesus. He sees Jesus. That's right. See, I mean, it, it, we if we could have learned this um, at His age. Right. If we could have learned this when we first became born again, most Christians you go to, you could go up to professing Christians and you could say, what happened when you, when you gave your, your heart to Christ? What happened when you became born again? And, and, and I don't mean that to sound pridefully, that they, you know, they don't know. They don't know the answer. They look at you with that blank stare. Um, that tells us that there is more to what Christ did at the cross than what we understand. If we don't know what it is that he has done and what 
what transactions occurred when we got saved, then there's there's no way we can, you know, so many people want to move beyond the cross. Right. But if they can't explain to you what happened when they got saved, then it, it just, that's that's proof to show you don't really know the depth, the height, the breadth of this. Um, it, 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 you can't, we can't put any kind of measurement on the depth of understanding of in Christ. Uh, you know, I mean, we're talking about something. L let's read on in the scripture here because um, uh, let's look at verse three. Now, verse two, just for for uh, for his opening greeting, he says, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. But in verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who have, now let's look, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Now, it didn't say some, ladies and gentlemen. It says all. So that means all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So right here, we see, Heather, that all blessings flow from the position of in Christ. In other words, our born again experience, our position of in Christ, he's given us all spiritual blessings. You know, I don't want to get too much into the Godhead discussion, but, you know, here there's, there's a mention of God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which shows that there's a transfer of inheritance from God himself to his only son. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why that's necessary, see, Jesus is God, God is Jesus. He's basically um, God in the form of a man. But what is so great about this is the reason why we would need to identify the fact that um, of the father and the son here is not to cause confusion or anything like that, but to show that there was a transfer of that inheritance. The father would leave an inheritance for his children. You know, I, I want to say it like this, Heather, then we'll move on away from that. But, um, you know, the, the thing about it is I wouldn't want to know that I was placed in just a good man or a good teacher. Uh, I would want to know I was placed into God. Are you with me? Um, I would want to know that that position is the Almighty, you know, the one where he lives and he dwells. So, you know, deity, when we see that, um, that idea in the scriptures here with deity, you know, they always recognized each other as God. Even, you know, all, all three deities, all three offices, even that we see in the scriptures. But, God's but um, let's let's move on because I, w I don't want to get into a discussion about the God. No, here. I, I wasn't. Um, I, I mentioned that just for the fact of this. When uh, when you receive an inheritance, um, there's because we are in Christ. When you were born again and you were placed into Christ, now you are what Paul called joint heirs with Christ. So everything that is Christ's is ours. And when God sees us, he sees us in his son. He sees us in Christ Jesus. My point was what God did was he created an environment, although him being God um, and placing us in himself, so to speak, as you, you said a minute ago, is he created an environment, a human being environment. Mm -hmm. um, he came in the form of a man. Right. And he created that environment. His foreknowledge and his, his plan before the foundations of the world to create this redemption plan, not just any redemption plan, but this one, uh, to place us in his body, to give us his spirit, new, and being a new creation in Christ. It's not our old spirit or our old body. He's, he's, he's done these spiritual things that we don't naturally see with our natural eyes. That's where faith comes in, just like Nathan had said a minute ago, is, you know, I, I put my faith in what Christ did. I believed in what he did at the cross. You know, um, I, I, it's simple how we, how we access that. Yeah, the, 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 when you go back to Romans 6 and 3, you, you want to really talk about, um, and let's just turn back there for, for, this, for the sake of time. Let me read Romans 6 and 3. And um, 
You know, it's a very, a very familiar portion of Scripture for us that understand the message of the cross. Uh, Romans 6 and 3, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. Now, key words being there, ladies and gentlemen, into Jesus Christ. You know, anytime you see that phrase, in Christ, by Christ, through Christ, into Christ, uh, by him, through him, all those phrases, I would take a marker, a red marker, and I would underline it um, in your Bible because really it's so important that it points what it's pointing to here. Now, into Christ Jesus, what we are seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, is our position. This is where the transfer of life took place, right here. The transfer of life, meaning that we passed from death unto life when we were born again. Listen, if you're not born again, there's nothing ahead of your life except death. There, there's no, there's no uh, way that you're going to be able to re recreate yourself. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, that until one is born again, death is your future. So understand right here, this is our placement, this is our transfer of life, um, if you will, into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. Now the word baptizo here, this is what I wanted to get to, because so many Christians, and we have to mention this every time, so many Christians today, uh, and so many even scholars, Heather, uh, people that uh, take this verse out of its original context, so many take this out and they mean it to be water baptism. Well, you know, here it goes. If, if it was water baptism, wouldn't it say water baptism? It doesn't speak of water baptism. It would say here. when I was it, baptized it, into it water. It speaks <laughs> of the, the, the word baptizo is really, it means to be submerged into something. In other words, to be placed into a new environment. You just got through talking about the environment. Christ created an environment for us, and that environment for us was in Christ Jesus. Now, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it a step further. In Christ Jesus, you could really say that that is where the new covenant exists. It's where grace exists. It's where grace exists. That's exactly right. So if we have the government of law and we have the government of grace, we've used that analogy before. And let's say that those governments, Heather, they're, they're like a, a sphere. They're, they're a circle. And, and it, if a bubble, if you will. If we were inside of a bubble, we could only be in one bubble, correct? Correct. So we are either in the sphere of law or we are either in the sphere, the bubble of grace. You can't be two places at once. You can only be in Christ Jesus. That is what we talk about as our position. Our position is one of the most important scriptural doctrines to get a hold of and grasp and understand as well as total depravity as well as sanctification as well and and there's so many that tie uh, to the book of Romans and the cross of Calvary like we were saying because Paul you know make no mistake about it he's saying these are where all spiritual blessings exist right here Heather you know we, we really need to uh, make a study guide on identification with Christ at we're some point, we're going to have to do that. We're because, working on it. Um, you know, I love to read behind Bible commentary, you know, uh, other Bible scholars and read their commentaries and such. The sad part is, is most of, and I'm not saying all, but most of these guys that um, I read behind don't understand identification with Christ. That's why it's great that we are, we, we cannot be dependent upon what man says but rather, what does the Word of God say as um, an authority? Because if you read, and I heard, I heard a pastor say once, you know, I read commentaries and whatever the majority is that they say, I know that's the meaning of the verse. Well, that's, that's not incorrect. I mean, that's not correct. Because um, I could read behind a lot of these, these commentators, and these guys are Bible scholars. But when you come across Romans 6 and 3, they will make that about water baptism. They do not say about baptism into Christ. And if we don't understand that, 
that's really um, well. Th- it's crucial that you understand what it is you were you were baptized into. It is crucial because I mean, if you if you don't if you walk around um, contending for the faith, not knowing what was accomplished there for you, it's going to make it difficult for you to keep contending for that which you are not understanding. <laughs> so it's it's important to understand that which we are contending for. And we're contending for this position, if I can say it that way. Uh, we need to contend for the faith. The faith is in Christ Jesus. And if faith is not placed in Calvary, listen, Calvary is tied to Jesus. When we talk about Jesus, we talk about Calvary because that was his whole life's mission, what he did on the cross of Calvary. So without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And our sin was taken care of. It was all swallowed up in the work of God on the cross of Calvary. So when we look at the... Uh, position that the believer has been given it is a position of of God has placed us literally he sees us in the heavenlies if I can say it that way he's going to go on um, you know in this verse saying all spiritual blessing Heather in heavenly places in Christ there's another verse of scripture in the book of Colossians, I believe it is, where he says that we are sitting, literally sitting in heavenly places. Where? Well, in, he says it right here in verse in, three. In Christ, we're li- we're literally. Oh, right. But there's another portion of scripture no, right, in Colossians right. where he says that we are sitting in, heavenly, in places, heavenly places, seated, in seated with Him. Meaning that is a position of rest, glory to God. Listen, if you don't understand your position in Christ, don't tell me you're resting. Especially if you're zealous for the Lord. Don't tell me you're resting. Listen, you can't understand true rest in Christ until you have this knowledge. And and again, you know, when um, just like this verse in Ephesians 1 and 3, where he says, with all spiritual blessing, um, that's not just talking about things we can't see although the majority of what we have received we don't see with our natural eyes so i think the reason why people are so inclined to be dependent upon water baptism is their access point to god is because water you can see you can touch it you can feel it but the truth is people are not going to that pool that they were baptized in to access peace they're not going to that pool of water that they were dunked in, you know, in their church or whatever, to access justification, to uh, if you need finances, they're not going to that pool and saying, "Hey, pool, can you give me that that justification or that 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 finance or whatever it is?" So the access point is Christ, in which we were baptized into, and so how do we access that again? Like Nathan said, by faith. By, right. by trusting childlike in a childlike way, if anything I tell this child, he believes it. That's right. Even if it was wrong, he believes it because mama told him. Uh, so if we could believe God that way, you know, um, so when we're talking about spiritual blessing, everything that we receive is because of what he did. Did we see the cross 2,000 years ago and the sacrifice that he made there? No, we didn't. But how we access again is, you know, is uh, in the unseen. I, I think um, you know whenever, whenever, whenever Nathan accepted the Lord in his heart, you know he was five years old. Now, if if a child that's five years old can understand um, that Jesus died for his sins, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, whenever he got saved, I know it was a true conversion. He had been uh, watching a. Uh, a television show on TV. Can we let him tell? Um, you want to tell the story, bud? We no? had been we okay. had been watching a television show on TV, um, and and you know Nathan, the television show was really it was a it was something that we picked and um, that he was um, uh, listening to, and it spelled out the salvation experience really. And and the next thing I know, I'm minding my own business, reading the commentary, and I you know Nathan had walked over to me uh, with tears in his eyes because the Lord had just really touched his heart. 
And, um, you know, he says, Daddy, I want to receive Jesus in my heart. And, you know, uh, if I find... And, and so after, he wasn't coerced by anybody. Right. He wasn't coerced by anything. The Holy heart. Spirit drawed him uh, to receive Jesus. And listen, whenever the gospel is presented, um, what it should be doing is, number one, revealing the heart. And then at that salvation, that initial salvation experience, and this is where I wanted to get to, little Nathan here was transferred from his old condition into his new position. Now, the condition still exists because we're still in a fallen body until the trump sounds. But when Nathan was born again, he became a new creation in Christ at that moment. And he was saved. And, and then to top it all off was like gold, man. I mean, we had, we had a brother came in and preached the very next day. Um, I believe it was by Brother Fernando Diaz. And Nathan received the baptism of the Holy Spirit the very next day after he was saved just by childlike faith. Glory yeah, to I God. mean, Brother Diaz didn't even preach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He didn't even, I don't believe he even ministered on that that day. His sermon was completely uh, different. But the Lord moved on, on Nathan and... Um, you know, he came forward and wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and because we had taught him about the baptism yeah, we've of the been Holy telling Spirit. Him about and, it. and he, you know, he understood. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, today, you need to teach your kids about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. My God, if you're not teaching them that, you are doing them more harm than good. Now, did you hear what I said? You need to teach your children about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And, uh, you know, what a blessing. And you'll see a change. We've seen a true change uh, in Nathan's heart and his life, you know, ever since then. Uh, because it's just, it's power. It's power to be a witness. It's power to live for God. And um, what a disservice to not teach your children that, ladies and gentlemen, are in Christ's position. So Nathan here became a new born-again creature in Christ. Glory to God. Amen. You know, um, it's a work that the Holy Spirit does. It's a work that the Lord does. Just this finished work, again, it just takes that simple faith. Right. Simple faith uh, that, that even a child could understand. So it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Um, but, you know, they have this, children have this ability to think more abstractly than we do uh, because we want to make it fit. We want two plus two to equal four, and we want to see physically how it all adds up. And, um, you know, they're able to, you can tell them something, and they trust they believe they uh you know for them it's a reality they can imagine that being if we could be that way if this this truth that we're explaining about identification with christ and your position the reason why we're talking about your position doesn't always line up with the or your condition doesn't always line up with the position is paul talked about this constantly knowing this mm -hmm. growing in the grace and the knowledge of yeah. of jesus christ the the thing is is in yeah. our minds we don't know it we don't understand it and proverbs says with all getting get understanding so what has happened to us when we became born again is such a wonderful thing and we've been given this 401k benefit package and the problem is we don't know it yeah, we, we've got to know, and, and this is what Paul taught us, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, in the book of Romans. He would say these words uh, in verse 3 of chapter 6, know you not. He would go on in verse 6, um, he would say, knowing this. In verse 9 of that chapter, he would say, knowing that. Uh, in other words, there's something you've got to know, ladies and gentlemen. Right. And, and what, Nathan, tell us what is that we need to know. Here, talk to the mic. Talk to the mic. Jesus Christ, 
Jesus Christ and him crucified is right. So we understand we've got to know this. We've got to know our position. And this is what Paul is saying here. When you look at Romans chapter 6 and you look at verses 3 through 5, he's talking about position really all through the chapter. Uh, but he really deals with it hard in verses 3, 4, and 5. I'm going to read it there. I read verse 3 a while ago. Therefore, here is verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him. That's your in Christ position right there. With him, ladies and gentlemen. By baptism into death. Death, we were crucified on the cross of Christ. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, For I am crucified with Christ. So he says, We are buried with him with baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The newness of life refers to your position in Christ. There's no other way you can have newness of life unless you have been born again. That is where newness of life occurs. Now he says in verse 5, Heather, For if we... For if we have been planted together, planted together, that speaks of union, ladies and gentlemen, our union with Christ. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Now, did you catch that? If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So understand right here, this is full of meaning as it regards our union with him. We have been tied to him, literally. We have been taken prisoner. Paul referred to himself as a bond slave of Christ. In other words, we don't become slaves anymore of the sin nature. The sin nature has now, once we've been born again, it has been severed. Death separates us from a relationship. How many know that today? Death always severs the relationship. So the relationship with the old sin nature here, Paul is saying, it's over. It has been crucified. And you are to have no dealings with that uh, thing anymore. You are now placed in Christ. Then he goes on in verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. There it is, our position, our death with him. It's a union. We have, we have a placement in Christ. And understand, as long as our faith stays anchored in the cross of Calvary, we're going to continue to have God's strength and God's grace with us in this walk. You know, I want to say something about um, when you're talking about the old man and death and being crucified. And, and please don't take this the wrong way. I happen to, unfortunately, have, have lost a lot of people uh, in my lifetime that were close to me. Parents, grandparents, best friends. Um, so I have, I have, unfortunately, been very acquainted with this process. And um, the Lord has changed my mind through this, this message and this understanding about how I approach death um, and burial. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to paint this picture. Um, a lot of people find it necessary to go to a funeral to have, you know, to discuss about those people, to honor them. And there, I don't see anything wrong with that, um, although it's not something I partake of frequently. <laughs> Uh, anymore just simply because I've been too acquainted with all of that but um, a lot of people didn't didn't agree with this when our daughter passed away we did not go to the burial we have never seen where she has been buried we made that choice and that's that's our own choice and I'm not I'm not crucifying anybody that, that has uh, but the reason why I mentioned this is because there's she's not there anymore we have no dealings with that death at this point. Now, right. if somebody in our church, if they passed away, we would go to their burial. You know, I'm not, so I'm not saying the, the reason why I said it that way is because the relationship we're to have with death is no relationship at all. You know, the man said mm -hmm. uh, when he was talking to Christ, he said, let me go bury my father first. And he said, let the dead bury the dead. 
His Go point was the kingdom of God. move on with life. Yeah. With me. Well, the, the thing of it is, Heather, we have to, uh, you know, we have to be sensitive to people. Um, and, and not not everybody has this knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Of and, course. Um, mm-hmm. So, but uh, with that said, you know, we, with, without, um, without getting into uh, any controversy here, you know, we... We we knew that our daughter wasn't there anymore, right? Yeah. Because we had been graciously given uh, the understanding of the scriptures here as it regards position. And and listen, that's that you know when somebody dies, there's nothing more than flesh there. It's just it's just it, there's nothing it's just there bones, anymore. It's just right? bones. It's just dirt. There's no life there. You know, there's no life there. Uh, but um, I really just just mentioned you know, the, it to give an the, example. Yeah, the, the the relationship with the sin nature has been severed. It's been over. It's dead. And and it's dead. And and understand that this is what Paul was trying to get us to see throughout Romans chapter six. He used that word death or dead uh, twelve out of thirteen times, I believe, in the first fourteen verses. So we understand, ladies and gentlemen, that. Um, uh, our position in Christ, and this is what we're going to be talking about on a daily basis for a while, or until the Lord leads us to another subject, uh, we're going to be dealing with the positional sanctification, justification, regeneration that took place when we first believed in Calvary's cross. So praise the Lord. We're getting about to the end of the broadcast today, and we want to thank you uh, ladies and gentlemen, so very much for joining us today. I want to remind everyone once again of the upcoming camp meeting. It's going to be March the 13th through the 15th here at Crossline Church in Houston, Texas. And you need to be here. Praise the Lord. We are looking so forward to that. Um, it's going to be a great, great time in the Lord. All the ministers from the radio will be here. Um, and uh, just believe in the Lord to draw. Uh, even ministers here, uh, ministers in this area, ministers Amen. from all around the world to draw them here to hear the message of the cross being proclaimed. I know that there's only going to be one message preached here throughout the whole weekend, and that's going to be the cross. And um, so if you're uh, uh, in the area or if you're able to make it down here, we encourage you to do so. As well, we are going to announce that the following camp meeting uh, will be coming up August the 7th through the 9th, and that's going to be um, at uh, Pastor Wayne Voss's church. He'll be hosting the camp meeting over there in August, um, and that's going to be August the 7th through the 9th in Amen. Greenwood, Mississippi. And um, So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all for today, but if you will join us here uh, tomorrow morning, uh, at the same time we will be going back through uh, these verses of scripture and tackling some new ones as it regards our position in Christ. Praise the Lord. Well, we love each and every one of you. God richly bless you all. Bye-bye.